Hello and welcome all. I'm Doc BGA and welcome to another episode of Brotherhood Builds, where I go through my projects and show you exactly what I do to get these wonderful and magnificent pieces. For this episode, I'm really excited to show you what I've got going on. It is a iconic piece from a game that is one of my favorites, Skyrim. The Iron Helm from Skyrim. I am really excited to show you how I went through this build and I'm really excited to see what you guys think of my project. So leave a comment below after the video and I hope you enjoy. So, without further ado, let's get into the action. I had found this STL file on Thingiverse. The link is below. I ended up guessing the sizing as various reviews and builds said the helm fits oddly. I found out at the end I, it is true. I broke this down into five separate print runs and let my A8 Plus rip right through it. This took about five days due to the length of print runs. Each piece came out awesome and I was excited to jump right in on this. I first started out breaking off all the supports and rafting, keeping the piece in place while printing. The dome areas had quite a few supports, as I'm still learning as to what requires supports and what does not. So I felt safer printing it this way and just dealt with the labor after. I used my Dremel to break down the supports that were difficult to remove, especially around the ridges of the horns, and thoroughly sand each piece so that it fit correctly. Next, I used Gorilla Gel Super Glue, as I have had great success in the past with it, so I wanted to continue using what I was tried and true to me. I laid out all the pieces, glued, and then lined up to make sure there was no overhanging and everything was perfectly aligned. Various viewers and friends introduced me to several videos where crafters and printers were using a soldering iron and some filament to do a weld of the pieces and gaps together. I really wanted to give this a go as it seemed like a good idea to strengthen the overall piece. Also, this sealed the gaps for when I go to paint later on. This process was fairly quick considering all the other work I would have had to do without it. The burning plastic smell was the only bothersome bit to do this, but I wore a mask that I had on hand for my epoxy work. I then came through after it cooled down with my sandpaper and Dremel to smooth out the welds that I had made. Since it was my first time doing this, I had quite a few mistakes and some parts obviously got sloppy. I tried my best to clean it up before I went on to paint. Now 
Next, I used a primer filler spray paint to fill in all the ridges from the 3D printing process. This would allow it to have a uniform surface when I sand it down. One of the things I wanted to add in was some battle damage. In Skyrim, you're constantly running into some sort of enemy, beast, dragon, raider, what have you, and I wanted to have it feel like it lived in that world. I added a few marks where I wanted to grind down with my Dremel. Maybe claw marks, maybe a sword slash, I'm not entirely sure what each of these were, but what do you think this warrior ran into? I feel overall that this added some great character to the piece. Unfortunately, due to the sloppy work of the welds, I had to further grind them down and I did some overall sanding. I added some milliput to the slashes so that it wasn't showing the infill of the piece. Once that was done, I spray painted it again with primer filler paint and sanded a few more times before adding a black spray paint coat. Now it was time for the detail paint. I mixed together and painted a mid-gray tone to paint across the piece as well as the dark brown for the horns. Once that had dried, I came back through with a lighter metallic gray paint and touched up the gash marks of the helmet. I continued progressively lightening up the gray as I painted, but made the paint job drier and drier just to highlight a few areas. Again, I didn't want this looking like a brand new uh, helmet. I continued with the idea of it being battle worn. I pulled out some burnt orange and rust colors that I had on hand to give a rusted feel in some areas. I feel the elements would have worn this down over time, and rust was a great idea to make some of the details sing on this project. As I lightened up the paint on the helm, I did the same on the horns, making sure I let the darker colors come through to build in some depth on the horns. I darkened the joint between the horn and the helm to make it look like some sort of adhesive was holding the horn together in the helm. After continuing lightening up the horn, I let it dry overnight and came back with a wash. For those of you who don't know what a wash is, it is a watered down dark paint with some sort of flow aid. Mine is a mixture of blacks and browns along with a few drops of dish soap as the flow aid. The whole point of the wash is to allow it to flow into the nooks and cracks throughout the piece to bring out the finer details. Once I cover the piece and let it sit for a minute or two, I then come back and pat it dry. I used this technique in many of my D&D terrains and characters and learned it from Black Magic Crap. Definitely check them out if you have not. And here you have it folks, the Iron Helm from Skyrim. It's a great piece to add to my growing collection and a great prop for my streaming. 
Again, if you liked the video and want to see more, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share it out. I would really appreciate it. Also, I live stream over on Twitch. The link is below. Please be sure to drop by. I would love to show you some of my pieces to you live. So until next time, I hope you stay safe. Doc out. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow to the knee.